In October, wildflowers surviving on their own wits dot a narrow, dusty road in Weir, Texas. Around the bend, acres of liatris and goldenrod welcome migrating monarchs and countless other pollinators. The scene changes dramatically come spring when waves of blue bonnets and Indian paintbrush rival the magical Oz. But this field of wonder is all native Texan. To raise their children, Casey and Andrew Brazell bought 15 acres in this tiny town northeast of Georgetown. Then they turned their front yard into a native prairie. We decided that it was time to follow some of our dreams and get out in the country. The main thing is we wanted to give back to nature. Coming home to wild open spaces makes Andy's daily Austin commute well worth the drive. Since Casey works online from home, her break room is outdoors. But restoring the prairie's taken a lot of work. It had been mowed too many times, so as a result the grasses were kind of choking out a lot of the natural native seed bank. The first year I took it all the way to the soil, so with my shredder I actually shredded all the way down where it was cutting off the top layer of the soil as well and just mixing it up, kind of mulching, doing a natural mulch. On some bare spots I would till, oh, a 10 by 15 circle or whatever and then I would just pack it with native seed uh, and then tamp it down and I'd water it, I'd drench it for, you know, about a month at a time and I did that a lot for the first year and then after that once you let it go, then it all takes care of itself. The key is, is you have to let everything seed. Too many people are focused on the flower and they're not focused on the life cycle of the plant. So it has to seed. People just mow as soon as the flower's done and you can't do that. You gotta let it completely finish up. We're part of the Blackland Prairie that stretches all the way up East I-35, all the way through the state. Out here, especially uh, with all the previous farming and the previous cattle grazing that has been out here for years. The manure and composting is already native and natural because of the grasses and so as a result it's a real thick rich clay based soil. It retains water fairly well but because of the seed bank and the root system of all the existing plants it doesn't get all crusty or cracked. It's really fertile so all I've had to do was mow it once a year uh, twice a year within a one month time frame down to the soil. I start out as soon as the gay feathers stop blooming and they go to seed and the uh, prairie grass heads out. Then I mow it down to four inches uh, in late fall and then about three or four weeks later I come back in and then I shred it to the ground again and that gives a, nat a natural mulch and a natural uh, a turning per se and then that's it. So if you look at the seasons, the blue bonnets are sprouting right now. And so by the time the spring and fall comes, all the native wildflowers come up. The grass is just now starting to turn green and move up. And so as a result, it's truly nature. I mean, I, I don't direct it by any means. So it, 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 the, the flowers come up and then the grasses come up slowly. And as a result, that's where it camouflages. So. It's really amazing, nothing really stays dead out here for longer than a week before it's either taken over or hidden by some other plant. Gallardia and horse mint take over as early spring plants go to seed. Prairie verbena last until frost. In fall, goldenrod and liatris pop out. Rainfall spurs germination of the 35 or so species already in the seed bank. To start new seeds, Annie nurtures them with a long water hose until they're up and running. It's a labor-intensive process, but it fills in the gaps nicely and it helps promote the spread of the natives and the diversity of the prairie. To maintain that diversity means hands-on weeding. My whole family's involved. My wife and myself and my kids, as soon as they're able to walk and see a plant that I can show, here, pull that and we literally go through the entire front uh, eight acres or so uh, and we pull them, we hand pull a lot of stuff with the wildflowers. You reduce the seed bank and so as a result in just a few short years I've gotten a lot of the invasives, invasives out. But again, by starting a clean slate with a fresh mode every year, you get competition. And so all the natives that you want, if you can get them thick enough, 
they'll push out the invasives or they won't let them take over. Aside from the big November mowdown, Andy forges a family trail. How can you not enjoy it if you can't walk through it right? But you don't want trampled stuff. We're big hikers and uh, nature fans. And so I've got a nature trail that I cut out every year and I keep it maintained throughout the entire meadow. It's great for pictures. It's great for the kids to run through. My son's got a motorized little truck thing that he likes to drive through it and they can go see and they can pick flowers and even between mows, the path will come up and bloom as well. So uh, it's real. It also gives you access to pull invasives. So there's always some work involved, right? Near the house in raised garden beds, they tend perennials for wildlife. They grow lots of vegetables for the table. Soil rising in late summer before fall planting keeps Bermuda grass and destructive insects at bay. Young fruit trees will eventually provide shade and lots of fresh food. Part of Andy's growing experience is learning how to propagate for more garden inventory. He collects rainwater in recycle bins from a home improvement center. With a sump pump, it's easy to suck up every drop. Andrew and Casey do lots of the work after dark, using headlamps to light their way once the kids are asleep. Too many times, whether you've got a small piece of land or you get a big piece of land, you treat it like a lawn. And uh, my whole goal uh, is to be a good steward of the land, to uh, give back to nature. I wanted this to exist for generations. 